Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Sorcery. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that it shows to join me today as we are disguised as a monk and dealing with somebody, the voice of a little girl in the hall. So, I... She said that uh, whoever is gonna try to scare me apparently trained or, or worked on the better part of an afternoon on the whole thing, and uh, when I don't show myself as scared, he will be disappointed. Now, we don't know who that is gonna be, or if it's gonna be even the little girl, but we do know that this, uh, from our spell, that this thing is haunted. But I don't remember if it said that it's very dangerous or that it's just haunted, and I just assumed that it would, da would be dangerous. Because this might be the ghost of a little girl that's talking to me right now. I'm gonna say, show yourself, you call. I'm out here, the voice responds from the hall, then giggles. Come and get me. Okay. Let's wait. You wait in the room, hands straying to your blade. Nothing happens. Are you still there? The voice asks. I hope you are. I've had no one to talk for so long. Let's leave the room. There is no other way out of this room and nothing more to find. You head from the room and back into the hallway. In the hallway, a young girl is standing, her hands clasped in front of her. Her flesh is slack and tinged green. One eye is missing and her patched of... Uh, her patches of hair are like straw. She smiles up to you, but her chest is quite still. She's not breathing. A ghost. The ghost dances from foot to foot. Terribly hard to write a note in our condition, you see, but he managed it all the same. He's stubborn like that. The furniture was easier. I helped a bit with that. She stares at you with a wor uh, and a worm crawls out of her empty eye socket. It slithers across her face and burrows into her ear. She is not the first ghost you have met, of course, but she is in somewhat worse condition than Lorag was when you met him at the gates of Carre. Huh. Oh, okay, that actually settles something that uh, somebody had told me in the comments, that um, Lorag apparently was not a time traveler. The guy that we met at the end was just a ghost, and apparently I misread that or forgot about that. He was the ghost of Lorag, and we found his tomb. We found Lorag as well. He wanted to kill us, but then he died somehow in a very short period of time, and managed to go to the city or go to the city gates and convince me of doing things. I don't, I don't, weird stuff happened in the second game. Um, but, um, what are you talking about? My friend Fildrick, she says, he's around here somewhere, though he sleeps more than I do, but I wouldn't worry. Is Fildrick dead too? Oh yes, very much so. He died after I did, I think. How long was this? How long ago was this? She wrinkles her nose. Hard to say. A long time. I remember the tavern being full of laughter and, and travelers. But uh, was that after I died? I might have. It might have been. How did you die? You ask. Oh, it's too horrible to repeat. She replies cheerfully. Uh, the note said this place was haunted. You tell her. The note is a fake, but not that part. The girl replies. It is haunted, but we're not horrors. Uh, was that your hand I found in the cellar? Uh, the girl looks appalled. They bur they did they bury me in the cellar? That's horrible. They could have at least burnt me. Could could I ask you a favor? The girl says, the worm peeking out of her ear. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. I've been trapped here for so long, but I believe you can help me. I help free me. Then a voice booms from the front door. Stop right there. Then just then a second ghost strides into the hall. He is, or was, a well-built man. A hooded robe, now in tatters, clings to his frame. The skin of his arms has frayed like cloth in places, and white bone peeks through. You will leave, he shouts to you. Never return. To stay is to invite death. Didn't you read the note? Nonsense, the, gir the girl retorts. This mortal can help us. He could, we, he could free. We could be free, she says. Well, if I can help, I will. The girl's eyes light up. Imagine being free, Fieldrick, she cries. Going out into the sunlight, seeing new people. Fieldrick rubs his face, the skin flaking slightly. No, no, we cannot leave. Why not? I... I cannot remember. He looks at you with hollow sorrow. But I know it is important that we stay in the inn. Why have you forgotten? Death. There are many things I cannot remember. The girl remembers more than me. Will you help us? The girl pleads, turning her big round eye sockets at you. Fieldrick shakes his head. No, 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 you must leave. We are the dead, and you should be afraid of us. What keeps you here? An old spell, the girl says, but a simple one. Who cast it? Fieldrick coughs. Someone old. No, someone long ago. A spell of binding across the threshold to keep the spirits within. Were you present, present at the casting? Yes, I think so. I think I was alive when the spell was cast. I do, re do not remember if the girl was. The little girl spins in place. Who can say?
Oh boy, I need to choose one of them. But our sense danger didn't really tell us anything. It said that there are no there's no danger here, only the room. I think the game is predisposing me to not trust Fieldrick here and rather trust the little girl. She's too happy to dismiss all my questions, to be honest. So, like, who can say here is is probably the least the least damning evidence that she is dismissing my my ev my my questions. There's an, uh, another one over here. Um, the girl remembers more than me, and she basically switches the the direction of the dialogue right there again. And then there's another thing. Uh, that I ask somewhere. Nonsense. Yeah, the, never return to say is an invite. Nonsense. This more can help us. Yeah, she's basically dismissive. She's too dismissive. So I do not trust you, little girl. Her face crumples. You are all the same. Someone comes along once in a long while, but Fieldrix always scares them away. I just want to be free of this awful place. The young girl flounces away into the common room, beckoning as she goes. Let's go into the common room. You follow her, Fieldrick cursing and muttering to himself, chasing threads of memory. Once in the common room, the girl points to a musty roll of parchment stuffed underneath an old crate that you did not notice before. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Damn it. I didn't want to pick it up right away. I wanted to ask about it. What is it? Are you slow? She demands, suddenly m m momentarily cruel. This is the spell. Get on with it. Okay. You pick up the roll of parchment. It is cracked with age, but still readable. It describes a simple counterspell to the binding enchantment that has been placed on the tavern. You could perform it with ease. After Fieldrick managed to write the note a few decades ago, I copied out the spell, the girl says. The old one was useless and in the wrong language. Fieldrick is becoming increasingly agitated. But how did you get it? A traveler left it behind, she says. Yeah. Fieldrick shakes his head. That does not make sense. The counterspell would have to be tailored to the enchantment. It must have been created, but I cannot remember by whom. Does it matter? Again, again, again. The girl snaps. It will, and she's snapping as well. She, She's cruel, basically. It will work, yes? Will you perform it for us? The girl tries to yank at your arm, but her fingers pass through your elbow. How can you be sure it will work? You demand. The girl looks at you with bug big round eyes. It has to, she murmurs. It, ha it just has to. Let's look over the spell. You glance down at the spell, but it has a star graph. Uh, it is a star graph and nothing more. There is no clue as to what stars it binds or with what affordances. It might, if it might have any, if, if it might even have any effect. I will not do this. Fieldrick breathes a sigh of relief. The girl pouts. The corners of her mouth begin to droop past her chin. The room is cooling suddenly. The young girl begins to elongate, limbs blending into the shadows of the room. Fieldrick backs away, his ghostly form even more insubstantial than usual. Useless mortals, she says. Your kind are only good for one thing. Her voice grows jagged as she advances to you. And I'm gonna attack her with my silver sword, hopefully. Uh, you draw your short... Your short silver blade and stab at the girl, who owls with fear and surprise as the edge cuts into her flesh. How? She screeches. How is that possible? She's beginning to transform into something quite different. What? Into what? You strike again as the girl's transformation into a death wraith is completed, but she is still weak for so long imprisoned in this place. You cut through her ragged form, the gash drawing wisps and fragments of air from her form. Fieldrick begins to sob openly as the girl disappears from view. Okay. I think I killed her. Can I not free... him? You return, still shaking, to the front room of the tavern. All that remains of the girl is a blonde wig discarded by the floor, by the door. Uh, okay, I want to take the wig, but I want to speak to Fieldrick as well. Hopefully the game is going to let me do both things. Uh, there it is. You pick up the wig. It's a mix of human hair and spun fiber. She could ch she could change her form at will, Fieldrick mutters. I don't know why she bothered with that thing. I think she liked it. Fieldrick mopes by the threshold of the door. Haven't you done enough? He says as you approach. Why did you not warn me who what she was? I tried, he replies sadly, but all I could remember was how vital the spell was, and you ignore those pleas. What? She's gone now. I hope so. I hardly believe it. Okay, so he, he didn't like her. I, I think, I thought for a moment there that, he, that I just killed her and he didn't want that to happen. What happened here? 
uh, you demand. I do not understand what I what I have seen. He sighs. She killed me. In this room, she tore my body to shreds. Perhaps she pursued me here. The spell of binding was to trap her, but I trapped her in with me. And once dead, I was also bound. Were you a sorcerer? More of a scholar of magic, but yeah. I lived at the fortress in the mountains, teaching magic. I do not remember much of that life, though. C could you now leave as well? To what end? Haunt another patch of ground? No, leave me be. Perhaps with her gone, I will find some measure of peace, or at least oblivion. The ghost sighs heavily. Now leave me be, Fieldrick says. At least now I can rot with a clearer mind. Yeah. See you later, man. You step back over the door. Fieldrick does not look up as you go. Mempang will wait no longer. Oh, man, that's... A, that's... I... That's... I don't really know what to say about that guy. I got the wig. Hope that's gonna be good. I could... Ooh, what, what? I didn't... I wasn't reading what was happening? Oh, damn it. I, I really wasn't reading what was happening. Let's let's reload. That, hopefully that thing will happen again. So, damn it. I, I just thought, yeah, you step away from the tavern once more. The only way is back. So, yeah, there it is. And now something happens over here. You guys saw that? Oh, no. Seriously? Oh, no. Damn it. I don't want to cheat. I want to read. I was gonna have to, uh, to dodge something. Yeah. He returned down the ruined path. Thin heat beats down from an empty sky. There's no time to linger. Let's continue, I guess. Something was happening. You follow the path. Yeah, you follow the path. So make a move. Let's... Not actually, let's... Yeah, I was gonna click on look on the bridge, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go east. And uh, which way now? Yes, let's go up here and continue with our adventure. The trail winds through the mountain. You follow it until uh, a sight ahead makes you stop. Higher up on the rock cliffs perches a strange structure made of twigs, branches, and moss. I know what that is. It looks like a huge bird's nest perched on a wide stone ledge. If you were to climb the rock face up to it, you could easily fit inside. You climb up, carefully hold on to your belong, carefully to hold on to your belongings as you scale the rock face. You're probably gonna fall or something. You scramble, scramble up the rocks and hoist yourself up onto the ledge, just outside the enormous nest. Let's look around. The nest is an intricate construction of twigs and branches built into a natural cleft in the peak. It is about 20 times larger than the spike hawk nest you found on the high salmon steps. On one side is a dark hole in the straw that might be large enough for you to crawl through. I can strike a light? You bend down and spark a flame. A moment later, the flame has jumped to the dry straw of the nest. Delicate twigs begin to glow and curl. Yeah, let's just wait and watch. You wait, cruelly admiring your handiwork as the nest roars into a pyre. After a moment, it bursts open, and a figure rushes out, fiery wings sprouting from a vaguely human shape. A birdman! You draw your sword in readiness, but the creature is howling in pain, its feathers on fire, and it has no time for battle. He races over the edge of the cliff, beating his wings desperately, smoke plumes as he plunges out of sight. The nest collapses and continues to smolder. If there was anything of interest in there, it will soon be ash. Okay, let's distinguish the flames then. You stamp at the flames, but they have spread far, uh, too far and too fast to be put out. There is nothing else to do but risk the climb down the path. It cannot be more dangerous than staying here. Yeah, I, do, I really think I did a better, a, a good thing there. You call, because, I mean, destroying one of the nests, it, it's a nice thing. I, all, I, of course, saw that from before, but I didn't know what it was going to be. You clamber slowly and carefully back down the path. Smoke, smoke plumes from the nest above, trailing into the sky. You can only hope no one in Mampang is watching. At the foot of the cliff lies the broken body of a birdman, charred and scored. Scorched. You paused for a moment. You paused for a moment, but the bird man is quite clearly dead. You rifle his body quickly, working lightly to avoid burning your fingertips on his still cooking flesh. You find nothing. Birdmen do not carry weapons, or, or as they are talons suffice. But you do find a curious blackened mark just under one wing. You push aside blackened feathers and examine the mark more closely. It is some kind of scar, rough cut, as though made with a rough knight, n a knife. It depicts two interlocked S's. How do you... Oh, that's an interesting thing. The scars are bleached and distorted. They must have been made when the creature was still young. Can I cast a spell? What kind of spell can I cast here? Why would I want... Can I resurrect the Birdman? I'm gonna be able to resurrect the Birdman, ain't I? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. What else do I have? I got Doc over here. I got, uh... Sap? Nah, that's not gonna work when a dead guy. And I got Sense Danger over here. And, uh, I have, uh, the Res. That's that. Let's go with the Res here. We have... 
quite a little bit of fire water, I think. So, damn it, I'm clicking the wrong keys, the wrong, uh, the wrong things. So go over here and let's see if this works. You take the unless it's the final one. I hope it's not. Items, magical items, uh, holy water. Please, please, please. I think I have plenty of them. Jewel of fire water. Two measures of holy water, that's good. And that's w after this one has been spent, I think. Uh, you take the vial of holy water from your pack and cast your spell. The water begins to shimmer and shine with an inner light. Pour the vial over the birdman. That's for healing as well, if you want to heal. You pour the shimmering water across the ruined body of the birdman, and for a moment nothing happens. Then, with a shrieking gasp, the creature sits up and screams with pain. It turns to you horrified with manic eyes. I'm gonna cal calm it, try to anyway. You raise your hands. Be at peace, you insist. Be calm if you can. But oh, he's lost, the burned man spits. He is coming, and I cannot fly. Who is coming? The hope of the land is coming. What? The hope of the land? That's an interesting thing. But without our help, he will surely die. What, what are you talking about? The followers of Shin are waiting, the creature replies, throat rattling. He beckons with a claw for you to lean closer. You lean in closer to hear the, bird, the bird's last breathy words. They are hidden. They work in the shadows. They took the same, but they are not the same. They look the same, but they are not the same. They are born differently. He coughs violently, spitting tiny feathers from his throat. Know this, he adds in clear pain. You will know them by their mothers. Okay, okay. Um, the followers of Shin are waiting. Without our help, he will surely die. That's me. He's talking about me. And by a mark in their arms? The bird man nods twice quickly. They have mothers, he hisses once more, and then he is gone. The spell fades and the glass black bird eyes fall dark once more, the body falling limp. You leave the body for the Karen eaters. The path is turned roughly northward here as it cuts through the uh, pass between peaks either side. Oh boy, did I just kill an ally? How am I gonna... How do I even know if you have a... What the hell is this? They have mothers. Everybody has a mother. Except for people that were created by the Archmage. But then again, those are so... Everybody has mothers. You head down a slight incline. Manpang looms into view once more. It is as though these, mountains pa these mountain passes have had been carved to ensure no one approaching could forget the Citadel's looming presence. Let's look ahead. Looking at the path ahead, you can see you see the ground appear to buckle where a sharp rock rim rises out of the ground. Before you lies a deep crater, as though an entire mountain peak had been scooped away. You will have to find a way across. The sun lowers towards the horizon. It will be night soon. Okay, that's fine. Man, I think I think I didn't do a good thing there. Uh, actually, let me check again that I have two charges of um, holy water. Yeah, I have. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna go to the crater. Oh, I didn't want to go to the crater. This is the crater. I want to go around. If I could go, if I could do this like so, that'd be fantastic. And then go around the, like this. Although I'm probably gonna be able to go back if I want to, because uh, I want to see what that is. Ag, I, I, Ar, Argbad, Argbad crater. That's a crater right there. Okay. Uh, let's go. We don't really have a choice right now, so it doesn't matter. You scramble awkwardly up the rim of the crater, hampering by hampered by the hem of your rope, but not by the like f five stone w heavy huge giant toe that I have in my backpack. No, that doesn't hamper me at all. Then you skid and slide several feet down the rough slope, finally landing on what appears to be a path. You are uninjured, but there is no way up back up. The path leads down into the crater here. Another trail leads north to the south around the, ru the rim. Oh, so we can't go through there. Look at the path into the crater. Oh, we can. Uh, the path down into the crater is wider and more beaten down than you might have expected. This is not the main road to Manpang, but this trail must still see some use. You must keep moving. Okay, so the main road would be th this one? I mean, Manpang is right there, so how do you get over there? Let me zoom back so I can get a be better look. So there's... I don't think this leads anywhere. I don't think there's going to be anything. There's a little place over here that looks kind of nice. But it's just probably like... I don't know what it is. So many things in the map that I don't think we're going to be able to see it. I think most of the adventure is going to actually be in here. Uh, we're going to... Yeah, it might... And then over here as well. But it's going to be such a big adventure. Uh, anyway, where do I want to go? I want to go in there. But I also want to go in here. That said, I think it will be better if I just go around through here and then over there, because I think I'm going to use less uh, movement. We're not going to go through here. This would be the way I came, uh, if I came back through here or through there, this would be the way I would come back through. So I'm going to go in here and let's see what happens. 
You follow the trail until it becomes lost under th thick scrub. Through the scrub or the, th the trail. I think I'm going to go through the trail. Because it's, ne it's never good to cut across country. It's really always bad, at least in my experience. You follow the trail, the I mean, um, and I'm talking in the game. Uh, you follow the trail, the sun is now in the lower lowest quarter of the sky. Soon it will be dark once more. A tiny, a thin plume of smoke rises to the east. From what you can make out, the smoke seems to be rising steadily but thinly. It is more like mist than smoke from a bonfire. You sleep onwards through the crater. Okay, let's go to the smoke <clears throat> the smoke first, and then we're gonna go to the building, hopefully. You break from the trail and head across the loose dirt towards the rising smoke. The air begins to get warm. Sweat trickles down your back as you get closer to what appears to be a crack deep in the earth. And it's lava, isn't it? You, have, you make your way carefully to the fissure's edge. It is almost pleasantly warm here, with soft moss underneath your feet. Su superheated steams burst up every few minutes with a hiss. There is something else on the air, too. The sound of the wind, surely, not voices. Uh, let's listen closely. I should have cast a spell right there. Straining to listen, you make out distinct voices com coming from deep inside the vent. It's like standing on a balcony above a room full of whispering people, all crowding for attention at the edge of your hearing. But how can anyone survive down there? Well, let's cast Tell. Hopefully. Maybe. So I got Sense Danger, most likely. I have... I have Rez? And Rap. Oh, Rap. Rap might be a good thing. I'm probably gonna have to... I can't cast Tell. Okay, let's go with Rap then. Rap it is. Grabbing the wig from your pack, you pull it onto your head and weave the spell. The voices from the crater transform into a cacophony of overlapping curses, wails, and complaints. They are confused, many of them hardly making sense. You listen for a few moments, picking out a few lo voices here and there. They are demanding to know where they are, what year it is, one has lost a donkey, another complains of uh, stomach ache. They're nothing more than human, even, even though they are almost certainly quite dead. You greet the voice and they respond with surprise. Green shadows flicker near the vent. You can hear us? One asks. Can you see us as well? Do we ex still exist? You are dead. You say, you are ghosts. No! Wails one. Yes! Another says, in a voice tinged with madness. We have been dead for so long, we have almost forgotten death. How did you die? The earth opened, every house was lost into the fire, this vent is all that is left, and we are trapped, the rocks pressing and the heat burning, there are whales all around you. I still feel it in my skin, one cries. Can I aid you? How can one aid the dead? asks one. Put out the fire, one cries. Are you not the Analander? You freeze. Uh, I am the Analander, you declare. The Great One! The one was to come. Yeah, this guy's new from, uh, from me from before, of course, because he has the, the time travel. He knew, of course. The one who was to come, the voices reply. Our savior, our hope. Is it, it is too late for you, you tell them. You are dead. Ravers of death run under the citadel beyond. The people within are trapped and leave their lives as grain in the Archmage's mill. The voices are all shouting, but the common chorus breaks through. Break the spell! Break him! We will rise! I will destroy him. He hides in his tower, the voice replies. He hides from us, from the dead, from death. But his tower door has a key. Something rolls up from the vent and rests by your foot. You pick it up, a vial of water that sparkles with light. Do not drop it, murmurs the voice. It is blessed of Kaoths himself. Pick it up. You lift it up, a vial of holy water, powerful, suddenly, suddenly, but... How will it open the door of the Archmage's Tower? The spell begins to fade. You take the wig from your head and their words become meaningless sounds once more. The voices mutter and curse. Okay. Hold the vial up to the light. You lift the vial to the light and for a moment you seem to see the laughing face of a cruel god in the shimmering of the shimmers of light. Then it is gone. Okay, these guys are were evil or something. Something happened. They're not telling me the, old, the whole story. There are no creatures near the vent despite the warmth it provides. Look into the vent. The vent is a jagged crack in the earth. The black stone it, it is deeply cut. The ghosts shift and reform in rising jets of steam. Okay, I can cast another spell. Hopefully, I will be able to do something. I'm not going to cast Raz because I don't have it. Uh, I don't think it would work either. Um, and we have a Y over here. I don't know what that would be for. We have the dock over there if you needed it. Sense danger. And we have the nap that causes depression. I'm not really sure that would work. So let's make a move. The air cools as you move away from the vent. Okay. 
And uh, I think that's time to end the episode because we're running out of time. So I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Sorcery. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.